Hello guys and welcome to another video from a little bush. Let's take a new question. Which of the following drugs is commonly used for the prevention of NSAIDs associated stomach ulcer? A. Albrostadiol B. Dinobrostone C. Mesobrostol and D. Latanoprost As we can see from this question, it's asking about a specific class of drugs. Like right here, all of these drugs seen in the options A, B, C, and D, they are under the class of prostaglandin analogs. So let's give a background information about prostaglandin analogs. And particularly, we will be talking about the drugs seen on this slide. Alprostadiol, mesoprostol, dinoprostone, hippoprostinol, carpaprost, and latanoprost. And right off the back, we can notice that all of the prostaglandin analogs have the word prost, P-R-O-S-T, in their names. If we saw the question again, all the drugs seen in the options have the word prost in their names. So now, after this brief introduction, let us discuss high yield clinical importance of these drugs. Now, a good doctor will remember the clinical application and side effects of these drugs, but a great doctor will understand and know what is really happening. So instead of just memorizing the drugs and side effects, let us try to understand them together. This is a summary table for the effects of prostaglandins in our body. I discussed these effects in details in the video about arachnoic acid pathway. I highly recommend that you commit this table into your memory because this will make this video even easier. But let me quickly note out a few things here. Remember that we divided the prostaglandins into good prostaglandins, thin and green, and bad prostaglandins, seen in red. For thromboxin A2 and leukotrienes, they can cause severe unwanted effects, like platelet aggregation by thromboxin A2 and severe proconstriction by leukotrienes. Metabolites do not have any pharmaceutical analogs, they only have inhibitors. But for prostaglandin E1, E2, I2, and F2 alpha, they do have pharmaceuticals analogs. So what we're gonna do is that we will put the prostaglandins here on the left side of this table. And for every single one of them, we will discuss the drugs that acts as analogs, their clinical application, adverse effects, and we will give another little push by giving memory hacks for your studying pleasure. So now let's start with prostaglandin E1. Now the first drug that we're gonna discuss today is albrestadiol. This is prostaglandin E1 analog, and it can treat two important conditions. One, we know prostaglandin E1 can cause vasodilation. So if it's administered into the urethra of a male patient, it can cause erection treating those who have erectile dysfunction. The side effect is peripism, which is sustained painful erection. Of course, the use of this drug to treat erectile dysfunction is now limited after the discovery of Viagra. The second application of albrestadiol is the management of a condition called transposition of great arteries. Let me give you an idea about this condition. As the name suggests, transposition of great arteries, great arteries mean the pulmonary trunk and aorta, and transpositions, which mean changing in their position. So this is a congenital disease in which babies born with this condition will have the aorta coming from the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk coming from the left ventricle. This way, we will have two isolated blood circulation. The first one 
blood will come from the body to the right atrium, right ventricle, and aorta back to the body. So we will have isolated systemic circulation. And the second one, blood will come from the lungs to the left atrium, to the left ventricle, to the pulmonary trunk, and we will have an isolated pulmonary circulation. Saying so, the baby will present with early cyanosis. Why? Because there is less oxygen in the systemic circulation, in the systemic blood. Now we have something called the ductus arteriosus, which is a shunt from embryological development, connecting the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Now normally, the ductus arteriosus close shortly after birth. So what albericidial will do is to keep this shunt, the ductus arteriosus, open, allowing for mixing of blood from systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation so the baby can stay alive until surgery can be done. Now this is what we said over here. Albericidial will keep the ductus arteriosus open it's used in the management of transposition of great arteries and the side effects include fever, decreased breathing and blood pressure. And the idea here is that prostaglandin E1 will go to the hypothalamus and it will change the setup point of the temperature, this inducing fever. Decreased breathing is caused by the bronchodilation and decrease of blood pressure is called by vasodilation. So now how can we remember all of this? So our mnemonic will be the letter A from albristadiol. A is the first letter in alphabet. So it will also be with the first prostaglandin, E1. The first prostaglandin with the first letter of alphabet. And A also will stand for arteries. With arteries, we can remember that it can cause vasodilation treating erectile dysfunction and arteries also can remind us of ductus arteriosus so albricidial A is the first letter plus the gland in E1 and A for arteries the next drug is mesobristol prostaglandin E1 and E2 have an important role in the formation of stomach mucus coat so let's say that we are having a patient who is having a certain disease that require him to use NSAIDs for a long period of time. NSAIDs, as we know, will inhibit both COX enzymes, and this inhibition will lead to decreased production of prostaglandins. Over time, that will disturb the balance between the mucus and acid production in the stomach lining. So that will lead ultimately to gastric ulcer. So what mesobristol will do is that it will replace the prostaglandin present in the stomach lining. That will help in the formation of the stomach mucus coat. So it will prevent the NSAIDs associated gastric ulcer. But we should note here that it should not be given for women in childbearing age because they might be pregnant and mesobristol and induce the uterus to contract, leading to a portion. To remember this drug, just remember meso equal mucus. So mesobristol, mucus coat of the stomach, and it will prevent the NSAID associated gastric ulcer. Okay, guys, now we have finished from prostaglandin E1. We have talked about its analog, albristadiol and mesobristol. So now let's move on to prostaglandin E2. Moving on to the next drug, dinobriston. It is prostaglandin E2 analog. And what dinobriston does is that it contracts the uterus and relaxes the cervix. So it can be administered to induce labor. Side effects include uterine pain and GI distress. To remember dinobriston, Remember that prostaglandin E2 with di, which means two in Latin. So dinobriston, di with prostaglandin E2, it's used for the induction of labor.
Okay guys, so we are rolling. We've just finished three drugs in a couple of minutes. How cool is that? So let us now move on and discuss prostaglandin I2, aka prostacycline. Now talking about epoprostenol. So prostacycline can cause inhibition of platelet aggregation. This drug will be used to treat patients undergoing hemodialysis and open heart surgery. Because in those patients, the dialysis, the tube itself, might give a surface for the platelet to aggregate. So giving epoprostenol will prevent this aggregation. Another important use for epoprostenol is for the treatment of primary pulmonary hypertension. It will cause vasodilation, so that will take up the extra blood and will treat this condition. And studies have showed that patients who have primary pulmonary hypertension who got treated by epoprostenol, they will have a better survival rate. The side effects that we can expect from this drug is hypersensitivity to epoprostenol. But now, how can we remember all of this? Epoprostenol, first it's prostaglandin I2 analog. I2 will inhibit aggregation. Epoprostenol also have two P's in its name. So that will be the treatment for primary pulmonary hypertension, which also have two P's. So we just finished from all the good prostaglandins. Prostaglandin E1 and its analogs, prostaglandin E2, and prostaglandin I2. Now let's move on to the bad prostaglandin, prostaglandin F2 alpha. Although we think about prostaglandin F2 alpha as the bad guy, it does have two important drugs that are used as analogs. We have carboprost and latanoprost. I always think about it as for carboprost and latanoprost because they are the analogs of prostaglandin F2 alpha as Latino gang in a car. Like Latino gang member who wants to kill someone. Latino for Latino prost and the car for carboprost. So these two drugs is for prostaglandin F2 alpha. First drug is carboprost used as a portificant which means induction of a portion and also it's used in the postpartum hemorrhage especially the uterine etony so basically after the mother gave birth sometimes their uterus become a contractile unable to contract so this can cause postpartum hemorrhage and carboprost if it's given it will induce the contraction treating this hemorrhage. Side effects, as we know, because prostaglandin F2 alpha is very bad. So, if this drug somehow have gone into the circulation, it can cause cardiovascular, respiratory, and renal dysfunction. Cardiovascular because of the vasoconstriction, respiratory because of the bronchoconstriction, renal dysfunction because it decreases renal blood flow. And as always, we got your back. Remember carboprost? Just remember carp or prost. So the carp, E A R B, they are the letters that we will use in our mnemonic. C for the cardiovascular dysfunction. A to remind us that it is used as an abortificant. R for the respiratory and renal dysfunction. And lastly, B for bleeding or postpartum hemorrhage. Lastly, talking about latanoprost, it's used for treatment of glaucoma. This drug works by alternative pathway called the uveosacular pathway. This pathway is responsible for 20% water drainage from the eyes. And the side effects that we can expect is iris color changes and preorbital skin pigmentation.
as we can see in this picture. Okay, guys, so that's it. We just finished discussing all the clinically important prostaglandin analogs. We have talked about their clinical application, the adverse effects, and we gave some mnemonics to remember them. Now let's go back to the question. The question was stating that which of the following drugs is commonly used for the prevention of NSAIDs associated stomach ulcer? And the answer is mesoprostol. Remember, albrastadiol is for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and the maintenance of ductus arteriosus. Dinobristone is for induction of labor. Mesoprostol is the answer here. NSAID associated stomach ulcer. And latanoprost is used as a treatment for glaucoma. So, thank you guys. This is the end of this video. Hope you like it and give us your comments about what do you think about this video. And what are the topics that you want us to discuss in the next video. And as always, stay tuned for more.